another market. Let's pick a market where there has been some growth and you know you can see what's happened in that market. Let's go to Sydney. Let's go to the ponds in Sydney. We've got a 508 square metre block there, selling in 2014 for 425,000 to 455,000. These blocks sold 2012, so two years ago, for 330 to 345. So that's where the money's made. The money has been made in the increase in the land content. Your construction costs over that period of time haven't changed very much at all. You know, you can build the same house a couple of years ago as you can today for very similar pricing. That hasn't changed. What's changed is the value of the land. Why did it change? It changed because there's been a greater demand. It changed because the, the development, the early stages of this particular um, development, it was, a, it was a new development back two years ago, have then uh, created demand. You're in a much, much stronger market. You know, you're up in the, the outskirts of Sydney, not too far out of, out of Sydney. You know, it's concealed commute to the centre of the Sydney and all that kind of stuff relatively easily. It's a bit far, but you know. But the fact is, in Sydney's high, higher in demand than Bly Bly. <laughs> Who's from Bly Bly? Who have I offended? Nobody? I'm close. I nearly live in Bly Bly. Um, so I will put a picture there of where's, where's the ponds compared to the centre of the Sydney. There it is up there. So what's our finished product now in 2014? 745, 8, 838. It doesn't cost you very much more to build a house in Bly Bly than it does to build a house in the ponds. But look at the uplift. So is there money in that? Is there money in that today? There probably is. Even buying at today's pricing, is there money in it? Yes. There's certainly a stronger, more, stronger money in it than there is in Bly Bly because of the market. So no, I'm not against house and land packages. I'm against who you buy them from. And I'm against the negative gearing model that you're sold into. Because what's, what's my next question with this? What's my next question? Well, the first question I think is, is my construction costs. So what are my construction costs? Well, let's look at a project builder who builds in the area. And I just picked any. This is not, not a recommendation of anybody in particular. Okay, this is just a project builder that's in the area that you can build this kind of house here, which is your 422, like we talked about before, for 174. Now that's your real base model. By the time they add all the rest of it, it's going to be up over 200. I can tell you, because you've got to add in all of your site costs, and that's on a very on a flat block, etc. So you, let's look at this. Call it. Call it 2.30, we'll say, by the time you add the extras. We're buying the land at 4.25, say, to between this, we'll say 4, I don't know, 4.40. Um, and we're going to add 2.30 to it by the time you add all your site costs onto that. What are we up to? 6.70. 6.70. This is our selling point. So there's a bit in it. Can you see that? So this is the kind of thing you'd analyse. Now, if you were looking at, at you know, construction, obviously, the, the um, project builders, the best thing to do if you're not looking through the, the – oh, well, first of all, look at the project builders because they, they've got it all laid out for you. So they're a really good start. Should I – am I saying build for a project builder? Not necessarily. You know, you can – with a lot of the project building stuff, you've got no differentiation between your place and the place two doors down. That's the issue with the project builders, but they are, you know, they're easy to, to be able to do due diligence on and get some pricing levels. If you can build through um, non-project, for want of a better word, builders for similar pricing, by all means do it. But make sure your designs are also economical. It's changing now because I can uh, 
I make more educated decisions about my real estate and I've got now to a stage where I'm going, I've retired uh, on what I've done uh, in real estate. So it's only because of real estate now I don't never have to work uh, the rest of my life and uh, I'm not rich yet, uh, but rich enough to retire and I want to get richer and I can only do that through real estate and having a mentor uh, that has a broader knowledge that uh, Dimfler does have.